uh, of the Honey Net Project since uh, we worked in 2007, uh, but have been involved with the Honey Net Project for uh, quite a, a few more years than that. My research passion is uh, client honey pot technology and client site fit. Um, I've actually done my PhD on this topic. Uh, Peter was my advisor uh, in New Zealand. Um, and currently I work at Microsoft Bing as a research software engineer. Uh, and over at Microsoft, I'm actually responsible uh, to crawl the web uh, for malicious web pages with Client Honey Pop technology so the Bing search engine can protect, protect uh, the end customers against that threat. Hello. Well, thanks for being here. I'm Angelo, and I'm a full member of the Onet project since 2009. Currently, I work as a senior treat analyst at Securities Live, which is a security service provider located in Italy. And uh, my daily job is to work with uh, emerging threats, analyzing them, uh, something like that. I'm involved in the, in the security field for really a lot of years, uh, about 13 years. Ago, I started as an independent researcher working on different stuff such as uh, uh, explore, explore the latest analysis and something like that. But uh, uh, let's talk uh, about uh, our presentation. Okay, this is uh, the agenda for today. First of all, um, we'll start with an introduction. Uh, and doing this introduction, we'll uh, try to understand why we need uh, only client technologies. Um, we will see that uh, these technologies are really needed uh, because of the changes in the threat scenarios which are currently seen. After seeing uh, which is the need for such technologies, we will start uh, analyzing them and uh, we will comprehend the difference which exists between high interaction on the clients and low interaction on the clients. In particular, after these, uh, uh, we will talk about software we are currently developing. I will talk about phone AC, which is a low interaction on the client, uh, uh, which I'm currently developing. Uh, following, Kristen will talk about cat to hpc which is an high interaction on the client. Uh, then Kristen will talk to uh, you about malware distribution network and we will conclude uh, our presentation talking about challenges and future work and the ideas we would like to, to see working in the next year. Okay, why we need uh, only client technologies? New trends, new tools. In the last years we are seeing a shift in the threat scenarios. Uh, um, until a few years ago, uh, the most typical scenarios uh, was, uh, were attacks against server systems. And uh, I think that uh, everyone uh, should be comfortable with such kind of attacks. You have a server uh, which is running some kind of software which can be, for example, a mail server or an HTTP server or something like that, or a uh, web application with some vulnerabilities, an attack, a physical attacker, uh, which uh, tries to exploit such vulnerabilities. And this should be a, a scenario, uh, I repeat, it, you should be comfortable with it because it is the most classical one. Uh, during the last years, the scenario is really changing because uh, um, the scenario uh, is exploiting uh, um, the fact that the end user is the weakest link of the security chain, first of all, and second, that uh, uh, server systems are really monitored for uh, exploit uh, attempts uh, or something like that. If you consider, for example, an enterprise network, the enterprise, in the enterprise network server system are monitored to uh, intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, so they are really um, uh, monitored in a careful way. The same is not true for uh, end user systems, uh, and in particular um, for client systems. Um, the trend is moving towards exploiting uh, the end user systems uh, and uh, in particular new tools are required to learn more about such client-side attacks. When we talk about uh, um, user, uh, end user systems uh, and uh, when we talk about client application we are mostly referring to browsers. 
Browser is the most popular client system deployed on every uh, end user system. Everyone uh, runs on his laptop, on his computer, a browser. Uh, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, live without a browser nowadays. And in particular, uh, the browser, uh, the single browser, you can think about uh, any kind of browser, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, uh, the browser is a software, and uh, as a software, uh, it could have vulnerabilities which can be exploited. And in particular, in the last years, we are seeing more and more vulnerabilities which are daily identified and almost always reported in the most used browsers. So, the browser is currently the preferred way to own an host uh, because, I, I, as I said before, um, these systems are usually not monitored uh, with the same care as it happens on the server system, which are really considered uh, uh, important for, the, for an enterprise, for example. And in particular, um, corrupting, owning a browser could give you additional opportunities, for example, to be uh, directly in, a, uh, in an internal network, uh, uh, and uh, this is not always true, for example, when uh, uh, a server system is compromised, you can, uh, uh, you can, for example, land in a uh, demilitarized zone, and so your life, uh, uh, your, your vision of the network can be really limited. So the browser is, is something that uh, everybody has installed on their machine. But they really have a large attack surface because they're so extensible. So if you think about all these ActiveX components, toolbars, plugins that you install, all of that increases the attack surface of the browser. And that's why they remain so popular uh, as an attack vector. Okay. Okay, um, this is the, the scenario we are currently seeing from some years. And so, uh, what we really need to analyze, to study such scenarios, to understand such scenarios, uh, are tools which seem like a real browser, the same way as a classical Unibot system uh, seems like a real vulnerable server. Um, David introduced uh, uh, during the morning uh, the idea of an Unipot system. Uh, an Unipot system is uh, uh, a system uh, whose only value um, is uh, uh, be compromised. Uh, in order to analyze how an attacker thinks, how an attacker works, uh, uh, and uh, how an attacker uh, finally uh, reach to compromise the same systems. Uh, the same system. So, what we really need to understand such scenario is uh, a tool which behaves the same way as a browser, not being a browser, possibly. Uh, we have two, uh, two choices. Uh, um, this, uh, this, this is the same uh, as in the classical Onibot systems. We have the, the choice to uh, use an eye interaction approach, so a real system which is properly instrumented in order to detect when, atta when an attack is taking place, or a low interaction approach, so you emulate everything, you emulate the uh, behavior of a real browser in order to understand what is happening. Okay. Uh, in particular, I will talk about low interaction on the clients uh, for the really simple reason that I am developing a low interaction on the client. In particular, there are some, uh, some strengths of the low interaction approach and some weakness. Uh, the most important strengths are that uh, you, can, uh, you are emulating a browser, so you are not uh, um, you are not uh, working with a real system. So you have a lot of, uh, um, of uh, how can I say, you can emulate, uh, for example, different browser versions uh, because you are emulating it. You are not using a real implementation, what we call, what you usually call personalities. You can, for the same, really same reason, you can emulate uh, different uh, ActiveX control with even different versions, different plugins. Things, uh, think for example to 
uh, PDF plugin uh, by Adobe, for example, you can emulate a shockwave flash with different versions. And so you have a, a great freedom uh, in, in such a, in, in, this, uh, in this kind of uh, operations. Uh, moreover, we can say that uh, um, a low, inter a low interaction approach is much more safer because uh, you are not uh, um, you are not working with a real system, so there is no opportunity to compromise the system. I uh, think that uh, phone AC, we will talk about it later. Phone AC is a, an emulation of a browser which runs on a Linux system. So um, even if uh, uh, there is an exploit for a Windows system, uh, even if you execute, for example, um, even if you try to execute with the code which is uh, uh, meant to be run on a Windows platform, on the Linux platform it is uh, absolutely uh, useless for exploiting the same machine. This leads to the conclusion that this is a much more safer approach than a, a high interaction on a client when you are interacting with a real system. It is much more scalable because um, you will see later that the high interaction approach uh, is usually uh, is usually performed through using uh, virtual machines, for example. And so there is a lot of overhead in creating, resetting a virtual machine. Here we are using a, 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 a browser emulation. Uh, as a weakness, we can say that uh, it is easier to detect because uh, you are emulating uh, a, a complex system. A browser is a really complex software, so emulating every single detail of a real browser is impossible. And so uh, a motivated attacker could uh, easily detect that uh, um, his code is running on an emulated, uh, on an emulated browser, not on a real one. Okay. After the brief, this brief introduction, um, I will talk to you uh, about Phone AC, which is a, a pure Python low interaction on the client. The first version was developed by Jose Nazarios, and the group, there were great improvements uh, during the Google Summer of Code 2009, where the first DOM emulation code was really written. Um, the history now continues, and uh, there are a few features I would want to talk uh, to you. First of all, the DOM emulation. What is DOM? Here you can read the W3C uh, definition. The W3C uh, defines uh, the standards for um, for the web. We can in, in a very large definition. And we can read it that the document object model is a platform and language neutral interface that will allow programs and scripts to dynamic access and update the content structure and style of documents. DOM emulation is uh, the key because uh, uh, without a proper emulation of the DOM, uh, only client is really ineffective. In fact, great efforts uh, are now devoted to uh, develop uh, a really compliant DOM. Uh, uh, I will talk uh, uh, about it later. Huge improvement came during the GSOC uh, 2009, as I said before. Currently, uh, Phone AC is able to emulate these different personalities. Uh, in particular, you can see that there are uh, six uh, versions of Internet Explorer, four on Windows XP, XP and uh, uh, two on uh, Windows 2K. But uh, the real, uh, the real, um, what I'm I want to uh, point out is that it, it's really easy to add new personalities. Um, I'm working to make this process uh, easier and easier, but uh, the, current, uh, uh, the current version, which was uh, released uh, uh, about a month ago, allows you to define new personalities in a really easy way. For me, see, uh, as JavaScript uh, is based on SpiderMonkey. SpiderMonkey is the Mozilla implementation of the JavaScript engine. And uh, in order to use it, uh, we use uh, ONEJS, which is a bridge between Python and the SpiderMonkeys, uh, which wraps a subset of its APIs. Um, this, allows, uh, uh, this allows to uh, make the code more simple to write because the JavaScript engine is already available. We have simply to wrap into it and use its features. 
uh, we will see later that uh, uh, I'm currently working for removing Spider Monkey and uh, use another JavaScript engine.